Here it is, a live look at the calm before the storm. This time tomorrow, the 16th hole at TPC Scottsdale will be rocking with the loudest fans in all of golf. And no one loves the atmosphere at the Waste Management Phoenix Open more than this guy, Phil Mickelson, a three-time winner of this event. You'll hear from Lefty coming up right now on Golf Central. Golf Central, brought to you by Titleist. And while the guys are gearing up for a big week in Arizona, the ladies are already underway in Ocala, Florida. Lisa Cornwell, Nicole Castrali, Tim Rosafort, great to be with you for the next half hour here on Golf Central. Trip Eisenhower, he's going to join us in just a moment. Let's start with our LPGA Tour winner. She has plenty of experience. Nicole, just your overall thoughts, round one at Coates. Hannah Jang, great leader we have. She's really flown under the radar in regards to the top four Koreans. She's really making a big push to get on that Korean Olympic team later this summer. And man, can she strike the golf ball, Rosie. So can Lydia Ko, but the word is Lydia Ko got her learner's permit in the off season. She's saying you don't want to be on a road with her. Well, she's still just as dangerous on the golf course. Doesn't touch a club for a month. Hasn't played in two and a half months, and she comes out cold and shoots 60, she three under par right out of the blocks. I like the young lady. I'm not sure I'd let her drive my golf cart. I would, however, let her hit any golf shot for me she wants to. Let's take a look. Lydia Coe's season debut up in Ocala, Florida. Calm, cool, and collected. Here she is for par, for birdie, rather, at the par 410. Putting has always been the strength of her game, and she will go ahead and convert here. And that would get her back to even par. So we jump ahead to the, the par 512. This is her bread and butter, Nicole. Hands down the best wedge player on the LPGA Tour. She's been working extremely hard on that part of her game and Ooh. stays off here. Nearly dunks it. That would move her to one under. Co now at the par 4, 14. She's her been, approach. She's been working on keeping her lower body a little more stable with her swing coach, David Ledbetter. She gets a little too spinny here and hits another close one and will convert for birdie. Starting to feel a trend. Co making birdies to two under now here at the par five, 18th, her third. She had so many greens in regulation that she just continues to give herself chance after chance, and that's why we see her hit so many greens, converts putts. It was a three under 69 for Lydia Co. Here she is with Jerry Foltz. Uh, it was pretty rusty, the front nine. Um, you know, I just wasn't able to hit many shots close. And you know, the ones I did hit good, it was kind of above the hole because uh, it, like, it seemed like I was hitting it a couple yards further. So you know, in the back nine, I tried to control it a little bit and go almost half a club less. Uh, but no, it's it's a pretty good start to the uh, you know, tournament. Um, and you know, the back nine was definitely much better and I gave myself good looks for birdies. Why not be all smiles when you can come in like that and do what she did on that back nine, four under on that alone after making the turn at plus one. Uh, the interesting number here, Nicole, she talked about wanting to get more accurate off the tee. That's something that she's going to have to work on a little bit, but again, just the debut for her. She really doesn't make mistakes out there, and that's why we see her dominant week after week on tour. How about some other players on tour? I'm not sure if anybody on the ladies tour hits the golf ball better, compresses it better than Hana Zhang. And when she starts putting, watch out. You're right, she is one of the most solid ball strikers on tour. Played with her a few years ago in Singapore and I was beyond impressed with her. 65 for Hana Zhang, Lexi Thompson, she can, she can compress it as well. She does. She's actually started putting with her eyes closed at the CME Championship last year and it's working for her. We should all try it out if it drops like that. Lexi would move to three under. She also birdie number seven. Here she is at the par four eight for birdie again. She started putting with her eyes closed to free herself up, give up control, and you see a more fluid putting stroke here. And now she is at five under. Her brother Curtis also uses that same method. Charlie Hall at the par four 13th, her approach. She's played so well ever since she had that great performance at the Solheim Cup for Team Europe, and she's taking a lot of confidence going into this season. Hall would make that one, but she did bogey her final two holes and it was a round of two under 70. She's five back. Brooke Henderson, the young player from Canada. I really love this player. She's so confident. She carries herself like a veteran. Has already played in 16 LPGA events and she has very lofty goals going into this season. That birdie got her to four under. Lexi Thompson after a bogey at 13. This for par at 14. That's a no-no. She ten has a tendency to have a little bit too long of a backstroke and she decelerates through there and we see a miss. What about this lady? 
Wheezy. This is Everybody a, loves it when Wheezy's in the highlight. And this is a very difficult par 4 17th, one of the most difficult on the golf course, and she makes it look easy making birdie there. Wheezy looking easy. That would get her to minus two. I, I had to throw that in, right? It rhymes. So let's take a look at the overall scores. Hana Zhang, a bogey free round of 7 under 65. No wins for Zhang last season in a rookie campaign on the LPGA Tour, but she was close with four runner up finishes. One of those just so happened to be in this event. Uh, we can go any direction you guys want to uh, because we really haven't talked about this since we went a little bit later, but we discussed Hana Zhang. You watched, you watched her hit a lot of golf balls. You played with her. Your overall impression of her. She's just a very, as you said, a solid ball stri striker. She compresses iron shots, and you usually don't quite hear that audio out on the LPGA, and she gets heads turning when you watch her hit balls. Featured pairing was, I guess, uh, featured a lot of lack of energy, a lack of making birdies. You, you combine the, the three scores between Allison Lee, Suzanne Pedersen, and Stacy Lewis, it's three over par. Uh, Stacy lost her composure a little bit uh, uh, late in the round, and uh, it was not the Stacy Lewis uh, that we saw coming out of the Bahamas with a second place finish and, and being happy about it, was it? She talked about starting this season having a more carefree attitude and we saw actually the complete opposite with Stacy being extremely frustrated. This is coming off a press conference yesterday that she actually said she was a little frustrated with Lydia Ko, how good she is in a sense and that she doesn't wow you and she almost wants Lydia to take more ownership and say what a great player she is and I don't think it's ironic at this point that we saw her struggle or was she really not in the limelight because of the pairing of Allison Lee and Suzanne Pedersen? And I think she, you know, she has been frustrated. She hasn't had a win since Arkansas in 2014, a long stretch for Nine her. Nine runner up finishes. Her longest stretch since 2010. But look, I saw her last week in the Bahamas. She's hitting, the, hitting it great once those putts start dropping. It will be the return of Stacey Lewis to the winner's circle. Let's switch gears now and go to the PGA Tour. Talking about 17 time winner Jim Furyk. He had surgery on his left wrist is expected to be out for three months. He has not competed since withdrawing from the BMW Championship in September because of the injury. Wednesday morning, Fury joined Matt Adams on Fairways of Life to discuss how he's feeling and the timeline for his return. You know, maybe bones in my wrist from repetitive swinging over and over again, maybe bumping up against okay. each other. Kind of like you, you grow a callus, you, you yeah. know, and, and as as it just repeated over the years, I guess it just grew bigger and bigger to try to protect itself. But uh, in the process, um, you know, it was causing pain in my golf swing. So the doctor removed uh, that projection. And then while he was in there, noticed that it indeed was rubbing up against uh, another bone. It was on the lunate and it was rubbing up against the capitate and kind of almost uh, dug a groove in the cartilage along the capitate. And that's probably where I was seeing the pain. Press release reports, I guess from your agent, said three months for you. And I was thinking surgery, 90 days, that, do that doesn't sound like a huge amount of time for healing. Is that because the nature of what they did that you don't need as much time well, as you would in some other areas? Yeah, I think, you know, obviously we're, we're trying to come up with an aggressive approach to, to get back as, as quick as I can. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the things my doctor did say was my, my first injury, I was back in about three months. I came back a little too quick. Impressive. He has surgery on Monday. A couple days later, he's talking with Matt. So that's nice, Rosie. Talking about coming back quick, he came back to defend his U.S. Open title that year. It was 2004, and he ended up making the Ryder Cup team that year. He's got a streak in the Ryder Cup going back to 97. It's going to be a long shot for him to make it. But uh, I know a lot of guys on that team want to see Jim playing as well as serving as a vice captain. It's going to be hard not to give him a captain's pick, too, with his history.